Welcome back to Skilled Apple. Today we are going over branches and finding ranges with them. We'll also be going over sort of the intuition that you need to have in, in terms of using if, else, if, and else. And we're going to use this and we're going to figure out how to find the ranges in an example later on. All right, let's dive into some code. Although we went over it in a previous video, we're going to go over it again, and that's if, else, if, and branches. And I want to show you guys uh, just how to look at this and make it a little easier for you to understand if you're having trouble. Okay, so when it comes to if, else, if, and else, the first thing, and maybe even the most important thing you need to know, is that the order matters. First, if. You cannot have an else if you don't first have an if. So if, this should be the easiest part to understand, if always goes first. Now, in the middle, you could use an else if. You don't have to use an else if. You could also just use if again, though that wouldn't help with detecting ranges. But if you use else if, it lets it know if you found the first one, then don't do this. Otherwise, you need to do this. And last, always put else if you have a catch-all. If you don't have a catch-all, you don't have to put else. But if you do put an else, it needs to go last. And just to reiterate it one more time, because this is important, and if you miss this, it's going to hurt. If goes first, else if is in the middle or last, and else is always last. Just remember, if, if you're having trouble remembering, because I know it's easy to confuse this, else and last are both four letters. Maybe that'll help you remember it. Uh, but before we dive into the coding, we, we should think about what do we need to do to get this to work? Real quick, let's discuss relational operators. So the first one is less than, so one is less than two. The greater than, 2 is greater than 1, less than or equal to, so 1 is less than or equal to 2, and 2 is less than or equal to 2, and greater than or equal to, which is 2 is greater than or equal to 1, and 2 is greater than or equal to 2. I hope that makes sense. The goal here is actually simple. We just want to detect the safe speeding range when the speed limit is 45 miles an hour. So let's think about this. What are we going to need to consider? Less than or equal to 45 miles an hour would be safe. 46 to 50 miles an hour would be mostly safe. 51 to 55 miles an hour is slightly risky. And 56 or more miles an hour, and you're really asking to get pulled over and get a ticket. Very risky. All right, now we have all the ranges considered. So we could check that box off. And what we want to do now is create a flow chart with all the stuff that we've got here. All right, so we can make a deep flow chart. We're going to keep this one simple. I just want to show you a flow chart. So here's the starting point. And the first thing we need to consider is, or check rather, is is the speed less than or equal to 45 miles an hour? This can either be true or false. So if it's true, we know that it's safe. Now, we're just going to write safe here, but pretend that says system.out.println safe. <laughs> if that's false, which means it is above 45, then we'll do another consideration. This is an else if. Speed less than or equal to 50. If it's true, we would print mostly safe. If it's false, we will go on to the next thing to consider, which would be another else if. Speed is less than or equal to 55. Now, if that's true, then we're slightly risky and we'll print that out. But if that's false, it's time for our catch-all, the else and that would be just if speed is greater than 55. We don't even need to put that, though, because the else doesn't need an if statement. So it would just be otherwise very risky. And it would just print out very risky because that came after the else. And we'll just make this flowchart look a little bit better. And all right, now it's all lined up correctly. <laughs> With the flowchart, we now have a blueprint and we know what we need to do to make branches that can detect the range that we'll be using here. I'm actually going to make a new class for this, and you can follow along if you're using Eclipse. You'll click File, New, Class, and on the next screen, you'll put Speed Risk inside the name slot. There's other interesting options here, but we won't go over them now. So now we should have a new class, and it's called Speed Risk. And the very first thing we want to do is just put Public Static Void Main string args you know the drill by now and also at the top you'll see branch ranges you could actually just ignore that that's for my specific situation um, if you know what those are power to you but you don't need to so we're going to put int speed limit equals 45 so this is our speed limit then we're going to put string risk and this will be used to print at the end and oh i almost forgot speed int speed equals 45 this is important for obvious reasons and yes yeah, so now let's look at our flowchart at the bottom right so first we start so let's begin branching 
The first case we need to consider is if the speed limit is less than or equal to 45. Now, if that's true, the risk is equal to safe. And that's the end of that branch. Now, we'll put an else if saying if it wasn't that, then it must be this, or we need to at least consider this. If it's less than or equal to 50, the risk is mostly safe. Else if speed is less than or equal to 55, risk equals slightly risky. And else, not else if, else risk equals very risky. Now, the reason I did risk is, and th that, this is the end of the branches, the reason I did the risk level is because this just makes one thing at the end that we need to do, and you can see here, this is not the print line, risk level plus risk. And you could change the speed variable at the top to see all the different branches execute. I even recommend that just to see how that would go, like how you can do each branch, and this is good testing. You should always do border cases like 45, 50, 55, 56, yeah, so that's what you want to do just to get the hang of it. So you like video games too, huh? Well, check out my Twitch, Real Skilled Apple, if you want to watch some video game action. Stay here right on YouTube if you want to learn more about Java programming. We have the videos for you.